Well, hello, you sexy beast, you. Not you. I'm looking at me in the monitor. I'm wearing a dress shirt today. I think I look pretty sharp. What do you think? No, welcome to the SMC Journal Show. This is the show where we talk about everything that has to do with uh, the tech community, IT, software, hardware related, and any topics on the table. Today's show is going to be pretty uh, pretty cool because we have had the guest on our show before, but their software product has kind of taken it to uh, another level, and that's what we want to talk about today. Um, if you are a new watcher of this show and this is your first time on the channel, be great if you uh, like this video, click the like button, and make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can remember to come back and see all the cool new videos that I'm putting out because I'm putting out new stuff all the time. One problem that exists in today's you know, current development um, culture is that developers want to deploy code faster and faster, even on a continuous basis. And there is usually a separate group who monitors the software in production for end users to make sure end users are having a great experience. Is the software up? Is it doing what it's supposed to do? Is it not doing what it's not supposed to do? All those checks that go into creating a, a, a good monitoring system is important after software has been delivered. But what happens when the software is changing so rapidly? There's new features, uh, things get moved around, and some of these uh, solutions that we have for monitoring the software, they, they mess up, they break, and they need to be maintained. And that means uh, they they're get out of sync with the software that's delivered currently. Uh, they also cost money to maintain, and there's people, hours, and all that involved to it. So how do you lower the cost, and how do you keep these things in sync? Um, our guest today is going to talk about how they have solved that problem. And we are now uh, talking about something that's going from just monitoring to monitoring as code and then observability as code, where now you're getting into a kind of a deeper level of what you can troubleshoot with this kind of monitoring. So we'll get right into it today, talking to the CEO of Checkly. Hey, Hans, welcome back to the SMC Journal podcast. Great to have you. Yes, Scott. Thanks for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's been a little while, and so I'm glad that we've got a chance to to get an update. Um, for those who didn't see the last time you were on, introduce yourself and uh, what what your company Checkly is all about. I'm Hannes. Uh, you know, living in in Berlin, Germany right now, but moving to New York uh, pretty soon actually with my family. Oh. Right, so I started my career as a software developer, um, worked for larger enterprises. And then figured that I'm, you know, the least patient German on the planet. And, you know, enterprise sometimes don't move that fast, right? So what I what I back then decided, okay, I'm going to found my, my first business was 2010, um, you know, to have enterprises as a customer and various other uh, types of uh, customers, right? And then really, you know, help them to become faster. And that technology actually is still running, right? So because there was a company acquiring us 2016, um, it's called Source Labs, you know, and um, Source Labs is a cloud testing business, right? Mm -hmm. So based out of San Francisco, and I became general manager for Source Labs in, in Europe after the acquisition in, in 2016. While I did that, I recognized that the, the, the world was really changing towards, you know, DevOps, um, you know, enabling or, or asking developers and empowering developers to um, own the reliability and performance of their applications. Right? No, I came to the conclusion with, with two co-founders um, that we are going to form Check Team pretty much to address that need um, that I've seen you know, in the past. And what we do at Check Team, the mission is to, to really allow developers, so you know, engineers that are writing code Right, could also be operations, etc., um, to to own their performance and reliability um, of their applications. Right? Yeah, we help um, companies to to really bring you know monitoring, observability, and testing to their you know to the teams which are actually writing the code. Right. I remember hearing about your company. Probably 2019, we had really just first come out, and a friend of mine, Stuart Moncrief in Australia, of all places, we were having a conversation uh, on a conference call, and he said, you really need to check this company out. They need to be on your radar. And I did. I, I signed up for the you know the free uh, plan, whatever you had at the time. It looks a lot different now than it did back then. Yes. And that's, that's what I kind of wanted to emphasize here is that you've come so far. What started out as just sort of like a synthetic monitoring uh, tool for websites has actually become 
uh, you've kind of created your own category, like monitoring as code is now sort of its own category. And that's, that's a transition that you've made successfully here. And you're adding new stuff, which we're going to talk about, but just talk about like what, what that means, what is monitoring as code and why does that benefit developers so much wanting to monitor their, their web applications? The core principle is, you know, we, we think that, you know, your monitoring should be programmable and scalable, right? So, and it should, you know, allow, you know, you, you should be able to evolve the monitoring alongside your application code. You know, monitoring as code allows your developers to take monitoring and put it in a, in a repository. Pretty much takes principles that we have seen that probably you have seen in, you know, testing infrastructure as code, so from operations, QA, or software development, and brings them all together, right? And uh, you know, compared to traditional approaches where where you might have a, a UI or console where you define, hey, this is you know, this is what I want to test, this is what I want to monitor, etc. Uh, you know, we bring all this in a code repository, right? So your checks, your monitoring setup is written as code, right? So this includes not only you know what is what you you know what you want to check and monitor but it also includes all the whole configuration of you know alert channel status pages dashboards etc that's that's kind of defined as code in the code repository and then integrated in your um, ci cd process so if you do uh, the next release of your application you can also uh, release your monitoring alongside with that your developers are able to to own um, the that monitoring piece because you know they're writing the application and next to writing the application they're they're also able to to write the monitors which are later on monitoring the application and also testing the application as the ICD process. Um, since it all sits in a in a repository, there's also code versioning coming with it. Right. And and you know what code versioning allows you to do is is kind of you know you, you know who wrote the monitor. You know who who might you know who owns the the monitoring and the observability setup, right? So it's it kind of makes monitoring a team sport, right? And this is what we want to achieve. I could see this being super beneficial in that the fact that from a script maintenance perspective, you used to have somebody would create a monitor and then the code would change and then whoever was doing the monitoring scripting or the, a tester or whatever would have to go back and figure out what what broke and then they they would be always behind and we're we're deploying code so fast these days you really need to skip that as much as possible so your script maintenance becomes instant if especially if the developer who wrote the code knows the the update and also wrote the monitoring as code can keep it updated and also i see this as uh financially, it's such a reduction in cost because we now know, we, I just saw a report that the majority of the traffic on the web is no longer user traffic, it's API traffic that's going on. Yeah. So if you're monitoring API calls and things like that, I, I saw some some information about Checkly saying that uh, your claim is that you can reduce costs by up to 80% of traditional monitoring. Is that because of this or what's the reason behind that? First of all, we have a very fast uh uh, reliable infrastructure, which is also cost efficient, right? So it uses kind of you know the newest technologies for automation, etc. You charge less for it, right? So because you know it's cheaper to run it, um, cheaper to run it at scale. It's also more reliable than traditional approaches, etc. Um, you know what you what you said is very true, right? So because you're you're kind of shifting monitoring left towards the towards the developer, you know you're you're skipping a lot of process steps. Mm -hmm. Which which means you know um, you you know while while you're writing your code you're writing your monitors etc so it just becomes uh, way faster to create these monitors and way more cost efficient right so what we see is you know is you know at least eighty percent uh, with with our existing clients right reducing that I know that uh, I mean you guys have grown uh, just in the last year or so because there's been some major announcements you guys got some funding and I LinkedIn selected you as a, a, their vendor of choice for monitoring. How did that come about? And what's the big success story around that? They became a user first on Checkly and adopted Checkly with, you know, with one team, trying to Checkly, uh, trying Checkly out, you know, um, uh, found out yeah, this is exactly what we need, 
right? And, and what they needed is a is a solution that uh, replaces their internal monitoring that they had. And mm -hmm. so they had a DIY um, monitoring solution, but then also by by an engineering team, which you know over time evolved. Some people left the organization, so it was very hard to maintain, um, to operate, etc. It was very costly. Right, mm -hmm. so we were looking. They were looking for a new solution to, you know, scale monitoring, um, detect issues faster, being you know, be proactive on their monitoring again. So they offloaded all the monitoring needs um, to Checky for a fraction of the of the costs of their uh, DIY solution. Well, congratulations on that. I mean. I'm on LinkedIn about as much as anybody, and I have noticed they are very stable. I don't really have a problem with them going down or, yeah. you know, not responsive or anything. So, so it's a good success on that. Um, so let's. I want to talk about some of the newer features that have been coming out since you know you initially launched this product. One of them is a fairly new. It's the TCP check feature, and this is not just going out there and saying you know are you alive, and that's it's yes or no. Tell us you know how did how did you come up with this feature. Uh, and what all is it capable of, of doing? TCP checks are in addition to, to our existing check types, right? So right now we allow you to monitor pretty much the whole HTTP stack. So starting from uh, transaction in the web browser, so where we where we run really you know scripts in the browser to make sure that your UI works, that crucial transaction work, right? And then API checks, which are really interacting with your uh, API endpoints. Right, um, multi-step API checks that are enabling you to to you know uh, monitor flows of of API calls, etc. You might have a payment API and you want to monitor maybe you know how that payment API works. And TCP checks are a layer below, right? What they enable you is to to monitor um, the stack a layer below and, and you know services that are running on that layer, right? So like databases, message message queues, mail service, etc. Right. But then also enable you to to monitor the performance mm -hmm. and the the responses um that are coming back, etc. Right. And to assert that as as tests uh, in a similar approach to to everything what we do, you know, to to monitoring this code approach. So that's fully integrated in into that approach. Right. Yeah. So um, in the end, you know, it, it enables you as an application uh, development team really to to monitor connected services. Yeah. And I think you know some people, oh, well, that's just a quick TCP check. That's nothing, but it's very powerful to add that feature to Okay, we're checking the website. Are things there? How long is it taking to come back? And then we're checking: well, is it is it reliable? Is it always there? Um, is there is there an outage going on? How reliable is this application? And then that kind of leads to this next feature that I want to talk about, which kind of this gives you like a now a three D dimensional view, which is the traces capability. Now we're going from just monitoring to observability and being able to answer additional questions about. The quality of the service, the quality of my, well, how does my business stand? Tell me about the traces feature. It's it's pretty much uh, connecting your backend telemetry data, uh, you know, uh, which is generated by open telemetry, with the outside in view that we have, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, we're we're monitoring your APIs, your websites, etc., from a, from a customer perspective, uh, from the outside in, and now. Uh, with traces, we're connecting all the telemetry which is coming back from your microservices, databases, et cetera, um, connected to that one synthetic check, right? So imagine there's a, you know, a synthetic check is failing, you get an alert in the middle of the night, you also get the insights that you need to understand, okay, where where is the problem actually coming from? Is that a slow database query? Is that you know, a microservice which is not responding, etc. So that gives you, you know, the the end-to-end -end view into what actually happened, right? And you know, one customer is Render, which is a platform as a service provider that enables you to host applications, and they are operating hundreds of thousands of applications at scale. And and what they did is, you know, they used Checkly uh, traces, uh, so synthetic checks um, with their AI bot. Right, and uh, this AI bot started to behave, 
you know, a bit differently, started to respond slowly, et cetera, you know, and, and check the traces enabled them to, to pinpoint an issue, uh, you know, in the database, you know, a slow database query uh, quite fast, right? So within, within, you know, a minute, they understood, okay, you know, this is where the actual problem is coming from, right? And this is something that took them, you know, days before really to understand, okay, you know, why is that behaving differently? So how much better can this get? What is the future of Checkly? And you were mentioning you're coming to New York. I bet there's big plans. Can you talk about any of the things that we might be seeing in Checkly that's going to even make this uh, application or, or Checkly more robust than it is now? We're we're thinking about it along, along the lines of detecting issues, communicating, and then really resolving issues, right? So these are the three buckets that we're working on. There's one one feature set we're, that we're working on, which is uh, to be released very soon, which is, you know, an integration into Vercel, which, which is also platform as a service, uh, super, super modern, super fast and, and reliable. And, you know, what we what we do there is, you know, build an integration so that their customers can uh, create a check the account within uh, the Vercel dashboard and start mm-hmm. monitoring from there, right? So that integration comes with, um, with a, a template to get started fast, uh, with your Next.js application or any other modern application, et cetera, and gives you all the insights that you need uh, in terms of monitoring and performance within the uh, virtual workflow. But also we want to enable our customers to to communicate incidents and problems to their customers via status pages, right? So right now we're working uh, on status pages that, you know, enable our customers to uh, communicate these issues and the help of their platform pretty much to, to end users, right? So that it should enable you to, to um, you know, pri- provide real-time updates uh, fast with the insights uh, from, from our uh, checking platform. You know, this is really, it's growing into more than just like a monitoring as code is to now it's more observability as code. And it's it's finding and fixing problems as code. So I could see this being the site reliability engineer's best friend uh, in the company to set all this up working with the developers. Uh, I could even see it as just part of being ingrained in platform engineering. If you are a developer and you need to make sure you're properly monitoring your code, um, you need to be pulling in checkly when you're doing the pla- so hopefully the Vercel is just one of many integrations that you're going to have in your future so if people want to find out more about checkly and get in on this uh what's the best way that they can do that go to checklyhq.com we have a hobby plan so you can start pretty much with zero bucks per month right monitoring your hobby projects if you want to uh, then onboard a team from there you can pretty much scale to to your enterprise needs we also have a youtube channel check that out we're dropping new videos there pretty much every week. So I think that's also very valuable. I I'm also want to mention the Slack community as well. It's pretty active. It's pretty helpful. I use it. I check it. It's got a good community that you're building there. So congrats on all fronts. Thanks so much for being on the show again. We'll make sure we put some links out there where people can check this out and uh, keep keep us informed because I, I can't wait to talk to you the next time to see what else has happened with, with the tool. Thank you, Scott. It was great to be here. I want to thank Checkly for sponsoring this episode. I'm personally a fan of their software, and that's the reason why I'm telling you about it. All the links to finding out more about the software itself and all these new features can be found in the description, or you can go to the smcjournal.com website. There's a page for this episode, and it'll show you all the show notes and where you can find everything. So I would like to know your thoughts about this. Are we getting to a place where we're going to be code for everything and observability as code is a thing. Uh, I'd like to know your feedback. You can reach me very easily out on social media. I'm very active on LinkedIn, but you can also shoot me a quick email at heyscott at smcjournal.com. Would love to hear from you. What other kind of shows would you like to see this year? I'd love to make sure that uh, we cover areas that you're interested in seeing about and something that's, you know, interesting, educational, and entertaining. That would be great. If you like this channel and you've never watched before, it'd be great if you subscribed and like the video and watch for all of my other content that's coming out. And we'll see you on the next SMC Journal show. Bye-bye.